Welcome everyone to the first ever Kalamazoo Astronomical Society SIG meeting. It is great to have you all here on such a wonderful day. I'm surprised you could join us since it is uh, relatively sunny and quite warm. It's currently about 85 degrees outside, but it is not clear. So I'm guessing that's why you all joined us because you can't do any imaging outside. So I've been wanting to start a uh, astrophotography special interest group for quite some time because I've seen you know, many other clubs around the country have done the same thing and some have made a really good go at it. So I figured now's the time to strike because you know we're at a record high membership. We have 235 memberships with over 300 people. And I remember the last Astro Photo Night that we were, were able to do in person and even the last one we did on Zoom, we had so many, you know, we, it took, you know, a, a little longer than usual to get through everyone. So um, astrophotography seems to be at an all-time high interest in the club. So now seemed like the perfect time to start a astrophotography special interest group. And so today, we're basically just going to kind of have a organizational type meeting to kind of decide where we're going to go from here. And as you'll see later, I'll basically propose that we really uh, don't formally start meeting on a regular basis until uh, September, but we'll get to, to that stuff later. Uh, the very first thing I want to do is just uh, get to know everyone. You know, some of you, of course, I have met in the real world, uh, but many of you have recently joined in the past few months and we've never been able to meet in person because of the current situation, which is now getting slowly better. But um, one time I tried to have everyone introduce themselves by reading off the participant list here. But what happens is as I'm reading through the participant list, the order changes and then I miss people. So what I'm going to have everyone do, um, you know, of course, if you don't want to talk or if you can't talk, uh, type in some information in the chat. So basically, if you have the agenda, uh, agenda in front of you, we want to know who you are. Uh, what equipment do you own, you know, for astrophotography? Uh, what are your goals as an astrophotographer? And what do you want to see out of the KAS Astrophotography Special Interest Group, you know, because we're, we're just getting started here. So um, I just want to see a uh, show of hands um, if you want to share who you are, and I'll just kind of call you one by one. So who wants to start? Henry, I'm going to have you start since you got a cool picture behind you. Uh, all right, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, cool. Uh, I just joined a few <laughs> months ago, and I uh, I have a six-inch uh, reflector. It's an Orion Space Probe 130 EQ, I think. I got it for free from uh, one of my dad's clients, and then I have a, a Nikon D810A for and a 300-millimeter prime telephoto lens. A nice little carbon tripod and uh, uh, just a little simple camera star tracker. Hey, Henry, what's the big project you're doing on the remote telescope? Uh, I was going to do uh, Sunflower Galaxy, a big thing, but it didn't really work out. So I'm just going to do some Hubble Pilot Galaxy stuff now. Okay. Oh, great. And what are your goals as an astrophotographer, Henry? What are you hoping to do? Uh, just get better and have fun. Yeah, I think that's what everyone's going to say. <laughs> and yeah. what do you want out of the uh, SIG here? To learn new skills. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Henry. Hmm? All right. Who wants to go next? Let's see a show of hands there. Uh, Mike Jensen, I, I, I noticed you first. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Mike Jensen. I'm a, I'm a professional photographer and new to Astro. Um, I joined the, uh, the Kalamazoo uh, Astronomical Society uh, last couple of weeks, and I've been a member uh, down here in Florida in uh, Port Charlotte uh, for about a year, and uh, I'm pretty involved with their club. Uh, but I've been uh, attending a lot of Richard's lectures and, and uh, seeing a lot of what uh, you guys have going on in your club, and uh, I'm, I'm real excited about it. And uh, uh, just like Henry said, I'm, I'm looking to learn uh, what gear do I have. I uh, have a lot of mirrorless cameras and long lenses. Um, I have a, uh, um, a um, Explorer Scientific 127 
Uh, I've got a, a, a ZW 1600 camera. I've got a mount on order, which I'm told will be here sometime in August. Um, and uh, I've got uh, guiding um, uh, gear on order. Um, what I've been doing uh, recently is just uh, working with uh, uh, my, uh, I've got a star adventure that I, that I load my camera gear on and I've been working with other uh, uh, astronomy and astrophotographers. Um, I'm learning how to run the local observatory down here. It's a 16-inch Mead. Um, and so that's kind of a, a, a learning curve for me as well. Um, most of the people in our club uh, have about 20 years on me and, and uh, the current operator has maybe 25 years on me and, and I'm 65. So they were looking for some people to run the uh, observatory and get more involved. Um, uh, like Henry said, I'm looking to uh, just add to my skills, learn what I don't know, um, get some great images um, and, uh, and share those and um, uh, really just kind of dive into it. Uh, I've been a, a lifelong uh, uh, seeker of the stars. Um, like many of you guys my age, I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a kid, but I was too tall. Um, so uh, I remember uh, uh, watching Apollo 11 take off uh, in Florida when it took off and, and uh, it was a pretty cool feeling. And so I, I've always wanted to do this and, and now I've got the time and the money to do it. So I'm looking forward to it. What mountain did you order? Yeah, I ordered the, uh, the uh, EQ6R Pro. Hmm. Okay, I'm not quite familiar with that one. All right, thank you, Mike. All right, sure. who wants to go next? Any volunteers? Paul Gallier? Hey, good evening, everyone. Nice to meet you all. And thank you, Richard, for pulling us all together. Um, but see, you know, it's funny. If you had asked me a year ago, I had never looked through a telescope at a star before. Honest to God, I'd never touched one. Um, had a son who got a gift one, you know, one of those kids one, and looked at the moon the first time. And man, that was the rest is history. So uh, in the past year, I've chewed my way through equipment wise of a uh, four and a half inch mead, a, a, you know, a little visual mount on it. Everyone says, oh, that won't work for astrophotography. Well, I beat the hell out of it for a year, but bearings and got, actually got some pretty good results and uh, just upgraded the last few months to another 20 year old mead, this time an LXD uh, 75 which is a, a eight inch Schmidt Newtonian, which is kind of a fun scope to work with and just modded that all out and uh, hyper tune, put belt drive in and just did an electric focuser. And uh, so definitely into the gadget side of it as well. I've got a long history as a ham radio operator. So comfortable with a soldering iron. Um, we go, what do I want to get out of, you know, I mean, personally, it's, you know, it's just kind of a build, you know, this stage when you're pretty early on is just seeing what other, you know, what's possible, what can you do with the equipment? Uh, the big one, you know, is what do you want with a group? God, I'm looking for a group to talk to other than my wife about this because, man, she's getting sick of hearing about auto guiding and stuff like that. So, uh, so great. But, yeah, thrilled to be chatting with all of you. Be excited to see what we can get into. So, Are you in the area, Paul? Sure, I'm, yeah, I'm in Portage. Okay, yeah. great, because next month we're doing Gadget Night. So since you mentioned gadgets, I'll I expect to see you there sharing a gadget. Love it. Oh, I'd be happy to. I got a great one to share, too. So Great. Fantastic. Next. Anybody? Uh, Jonathan Young. You. You're probably the most talented photographer here so far. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Richard. Um, yes, I'm Jonathan Young. Uh, I actually live over in Saline, Michigan. Uh, grew up in Kalamazoo, was one of the campsy kids, uh, class of 2000. Uh, so I've been uh, doing astrophotography now for maybe last six years or so. Um, been through several layers of equipment. Started with the Canon 60DA and a William Optics uh, Star 71, uh, added one of the Samyang 135s, uh, and then have since moved up to, you know, telescope engineering company, April 140. Uh, and then for kind of most recent cameras, I've been using, you know, an ASI 1600 for probably the last four years, uh, but then just uh, moved to a QHY 268. So got a bunch of images up on Astrobin now. Uh, really what I'm hoping to get out of uh, this group is, is two things is um, there's a lot of tricks to learn along the way, a lot of mistakes. So I'm happy to help anyone uh, that's starting up in the hobby, you know, some things to avoid, uh, managed to get several of the engineers at work actually involved in the hobby as well. Uh, so I'm 
pinging back and forth with them. Um, but at the same time, uh, equipment and software changes fairly regularly. So I'm sure I can learn a lot uh, from the members here. Uh, for software, you know, I'm still using Deep, uh, Deep Sky Stacker most of the time. I've done the tutorials on uh, Astrophysical process, Processor and Pix Insight, uh, but basically stuck with Deep Sky, Sky Stacker and uh, Star Tools for most of the heavy lifting. Uh, but still do a lot of Lightroom and then some of the Topaz Studio stuff on the back end. Um, so yeah, lo lots of steps along the way and looking forward to sharing ideas with you know everyone in the group. Fantastic. If you get a chance, throw your AstroBen link in the chat and people can check out your uh, page and see what I'm talking about. All right. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Who wants to share next? Uh, Aria. Um, Aria. Um, I've been with the KS for a while, and um, at the moment, I am the uh, equipment manager for Telescopes for Loan program. Uh, most of the time, uh, solar telescope is out all the time. Uh, now we have a, a Mead, um, Schmidt Cassegrain and uh, uh, the, also a new binoculars uh, from Orion. Uh, my astrophotography is a, a just simple, like a using a camera, not the telescope. Uh, I have a Canon system like a 60D and a 6D and with some lenses and uh, teles uh, so I have been taking photos of the planets, solar eclipse, uh, lunar eclipse, uh, Jupiter moons and uh, uh, that kind of things. But I like to learn more techniques about the astrophotography, especially the processing. And hopefully one day I will use the remote telescope and uh, my bucket list is to photograph Andromeda. So that's where I am. Thank you, Arya. Who would like to go next? Robert, Wade. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, most of you don't know me. I originally joined the KAS in about 1967. Been on, on and off since then, depending on where I live. I'm retired Pfizer chemist. And now I live in New Hampshire, on the northern end of the Boston Light Dome in a neighborhood that is the antithesis of dark sky. So I, I've been a visual observer since way back then. Uh, the last three or four years since I moved to New Hampshire, I decided that I would like to get into astrophotography, but I'm not really in a nice astrophotography neighborhood. So I took the easy way out and I sort of joined the eye telescope network and I can hop on any one of those telescopes in New Mexico or Australia and sort of image whatever I want as long as I can fit it in the schedule. So what I've been concentrating on mostly right now is narrowband stuff, Hubble and Canadian pallets, that kind of stuff. And I'm going to Okie, Texas this year. Anyone else wants to do some visual observing? <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Thank you, Robert. Anybody else like to share? Pete? Hi, I'm Pete Mumbauer. I've been a KS member since the early 90s with Richard and Dave Garden and a few other guys. Um, me and Dave definitely uh, started doing uh, film astrophotography, I think, together. He probably started way before me, too, but um, definitely got the bug. But I've been, um, as far as in the recent stuff, I've been uh, kind of worked my way up from the basic gear all the way up to now. I got a um, fully automated next dome with an astrophysics mount. Uh, so I, I love system integration. I'm an IT architect, so I like doing all that kind of stuff. I'm really good with uh, Pix Insight. I love teaching people. I do a lot of um, a lot of teaching stuff at work on top of stuff. But um, out of for the group, I'm hoping to share my knowledge too, as far as helping troubleshoot. I do a lot of that stuff. Um, like PhD guide or you name it, all system bugs, you know, bad USB cables, you name it. Um, collimating RC telescopes. Um, don't ask me to clean optics because I'm not really good at that. But, um, but yeah, I'm hoping to uh, share the knowledge. And personally, I'm hunting down an image of the day on Astrobin. I know I'm going to get it. Um, and for optical wise, I got finally got a wide field triplet refractor. So now I'm going to finally go after Dave's area. <laughs> so Moving in, huh? Yeah, moving in. So watch out. I can finally get the North American in, in one frame versus like mm -hmm. eight panel mosaics. Forget that stuff now. I don't want to do that. Um, 
but yeah, that's all I got. Thanks, Pete. And uh, when we really get go uh, fully going here, Pete's going to be the coordinator of the group. He'll be running all the meetings, but he wanted me to kind of do the first one since, you know, he's a much better imager than I am, but I have a lot more experience, uh, you know, doing this kind of thing here. Yep. Yeah. Dave, Thanks, Dave Richard, Gardner. I have a yeah. Uh, yeah, Sorry. I guess it's my turn. Uh, yeah, my name's David Garton. Uh, I've been at this for many years, it seems like. First joined the club back in, when was it, Richard? The 80s? I can't remember. Been so long. Before me. Uh, between uh, Eric Schreer and Bill Nigg, they taught me how to start this astrophotography thing, and it just kept getting more and more and more all the time. So I'm now shooting with a Takahashi 106 and a Gemini, uh, Lost Mandy Gemini mount uh, with a ZWO 16200 camera with autofocus, which is a godsend. I love it. Uh, and I just started getting into processing this about four months ago, bought a book on it, and uh, I've just started processing my first pictures. Great. Thanks, Dave. Who'd like to go next? David Parks, go ahead. Uh, yes, hello, uh, David Parks. Um, currently living in Battle Creek. Uh, been a member of TAS, um, oh, since, I don't know, middle of last year or near the fall of last year, I think. Um, the equipment I use, it, one of them is behind me here. Uh, you know, when I started uh, as, a, as a young man, uh, visual, I had uh, the 13-inch Dobsonian. Uh, I've gone through uh, SCTs with Hyperstar, um, and uh, when you're visual, you know, they, they say aperture is king, and often you chase larger and larger aperture. I've been finding myself going the other way, so I, I've ended up with uh, the small refractors. I'm currently using the, the, the Red Cat 51. Uh, I am looking forward to uh, the Red Cat 71, so I'm going to bounce back up just a little bit more from 51. Um, and put it on the new mount, uh, like Mike has as the new mount on order. I too have one, but mine's coming a little sooner. Mine's to be here Tuesday. Uh, that new mount is the Rainbow Astro RST 135, uh, which I hope to put that Red Cat 71 on when it comes becomes available. But in the meantime, I'll put the, the 51 on there. Um, I also process uh, with Pix Insight. Great program, love it. Um, I guess uh, some of my goals are to uh, always to improve my skills, um, learn new techniques, um, and collect more uh, species for my zoo, so to speak. Uh, uh, imaging, you know, more and different objects uh, whenever they're available uh, and the weather is right. Uh, I'd like to speak with um, Arya at some point. I do have a telescope I want to donate to the. Uh, loan program, a brand new Sky Prodigy 130. So uh, we can get together sometime and make arrangements to get that transferred over. Um, um, you can, you can uh, chat with uh, Robert, uh, oh, uh, Bob, Bob um, Richard. Um, he will Robert? make sure that, uh, yeah, no, not Robert, Richard, Bill. All the right. President. Thank you. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, primarily wide field, uh, I like the colorful nebulas. I shoot with um, an ASI, a, a ZWO ASI 2600. Um, boy, I, you know, like some of those backlit uh, sensors, I love the uh, no amp glow and, and, the, and the extremely small dark current. Um, so very nice cameras. Uh, I enjoy it a lot. Thank you, David. Who would like to share themselves next? <laughs> <laughs> Figuratively speaking, of course, maybe, maybe that didn't come out right. You get the idea. Mike Patton, go ahead. Yeah, I love the way you said that. Uh, Mike Patton, uh, actually, I don't have any telescope or photography equipment here in Michigan. Everything I own is in Arizona. I'm fortunate enough to own a uh, seven inch refractor with the uh, Canon 6D modified chip camera on a plane wave mount and a 14 inch Hyperstar with a ZWO camera on it. I use both of those interchangeably. And then this year I'll be 
turning a uh, Solar Max 90 over to a, a photographic instrument as well. I, I just want to learn a lot of different aspects of the photography because there's a lot of things that I've learned in school that I've long forgotten, like the math around focal lengths and magnifications and things like that. And then what I want to get out of this is when it's all said and done is I want to be better than Jack Newton and Fred Espinick. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank Just you, Mike. Kind of curious, show of hand, does anyone have a CCD instead of a CMOS camera? Sounds I'm the good. only CCD. I'm a holdout here in the whole group. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Is Roger still? I, th I thought Roger was a CCD guy still. I don't know if Roger's still here. Looks like he hopped off. No, he's still there. Okay. Okay. Just a quick observation. I just noticed that. Oh, there he, oh, there he is. Okay. Roger, you're you're still a CCD guy. Why don't you go ahead and go next, Roger? <laughs> okay. Uh, I got started fairly early in this imaging thing uh, with a home homemade ten inch and the ST six S Biggs ST six, which was one of their earliest CCD cameras, which had really much too big of pixels, but uh, I used that for quite a while and then changed to an ST8E. And later on still the ST, now, now I'm losing all the names. <laughs> Let me check this. An STF8300 which was the one I used probably most for the last 10 years or so. Yeah. But uh, I do have a, for planets, I have this Luminara camera and really did a lot of the Jupiter and Saturn and that kind of work there. And then the most recent one is this, I think you were mostly familiar with that ZWO. This is an ASI 178 color CMOS chip. That's actually the first first CMOS I got. And it was, it's still an experiment because it my experience, and I that's one of the things I'd like to discuss with uh, other users. When you change like the camera like that, then everything you thought you knew about Registax and how you're going to sharpen is different. And if you look up the help things on the, the computer, they come up to grossly different solutions as to how you're supposed to do that. So it would be interesting to hear how that works for, for other people. Most recently, I. I was uh, moved to Friendship Village, which is a retirement community here that, where more of the people like me are getting so they don't remember things too well anymore. So I haven't been doing as much. Uh, as you want me to be. But uh, I, yeah. I do try to show, show the planets to the other inmates in this institution. <laughs> I'm trying to spread the, the word around to the old folk, which quite a few of them are, are interested in that. And in the meantime, still picture the sun and oh yeah, I have a Coronado H alpha scope in there too. That, and picture the sun and trying to get the, the planets with this new camera. That's more than enough. All right, thanks, Roger. Who would like to share a little bit about themselves now? Lloyd? Sure. Um, Lloyd Simons, I joined CAS um, about three, four years ago now. Um, I've been doing astrophotography for a little over two years. I, uh, I started out with, a, with a, one of the small uh, Explore Scientific mounts the um, the IXOS 100, um, which is 
essentially a little bit bigger than a star tracker, but with go to and um, uh, a uh, Astrotech 70, uh, 72 ED two um, refractor um, and, uh, and my wife's uh, DSLR. And, and it's, I, I eventually um, was given a, um, a Vixen Super Polaris mount that was, you know, an old clock drive. And I converted that um, much like Paul, I'm, I'm, I'm very much into the, um, the gadget part of, of this hobby and, uh, and, and, and building things that work. And so I've, I converted that over to a go-to mount and, um, and used that um, for a while. And, um, and some of my best images I took with a borrowed camera from Matt Garten, Garten another, uh, another club member. So I'm, I'm currently waiting for um, my, uh, my QHY268M. Um, and in the meantime, during COVID, I, I, I did another uh, conversion of a of a non go to mount to go to I I bought a an old uh, Lusmandy G11 and converted that over so I haven't even gotten to test it yet because <laughs> I've been waiting for my camera and I haven't really wanted to put the DSLR back on so um, I'm as far as what I'd like to get out of this is is just uh, you know learning from from people with more experience than me um, different techniques and and things like that. Thank you, Lloyd. Next person. Uh, I don't see any hands. Uh, Muhammad, go ahead. Hi, everybody. Uh, nice seeing you all. Um, uh, Long-term Kalamazoo resident, 20 plus years, KS member for about three years now. Uh, stargazing as a hobby. Um, slowly uh, getting that bug, astrophotography bug. Uh, I have a Zenith Star 73 uh, F 5.9 doublet refractor <clears throat> on iOptron uh, uh, Smart EQ Pro Equator mount. Recently bought a ZWO uh, AS1290 uh, mono planetary camera and have, it's still sitting in the box. <laughs> uh, I, I got it as a discount over the holidays. Hopefully, um, with some clear skies, I hope to uh, image some. So far, no spectacular images to share, <laughs> but uh, my goal as an astrophotographer would be to uh, learn processing images. Most of my astrophotography so far has been with the uh, uh, KS remote telescope, uh, which is really fun to use and uh, uh, Richard and Mike have made it easy for me to use that. Um, uh, thanks to them. I would like to keep improving my skills, uh, process all the beautiful images that I've already acquired through the remote telescope. Use, uh, use a different uh, remote site too, uh, but that is not as good as uh, the one in the Arizona Sky Village. So what do I want to get out of this uh, SIG? Uh, learn from others uh, who are experts in this field. Hopefully, um, once I get those uh, decent images, would love to be critiqued and learn how to improve my skills. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. All right, who'd like to go next? Eric? Oh. Okay. I've been around a while. I think I started astrophotography night. Um, I uh, work primarily with a Celestron 925 HD telescope. It's uh, in a small observatory in my backyard. Uh, the sensor I use is actually a Canon 60DA single lens reflex camera. Um, I have a field telescope, a uh, Celestron Ultima 8, which I can pack in the car and carry with me, put the same camera back on that telescope as well. Um, and I also do uh, uh, just low power imaging using telephoto lenses and uh, a small tracker, one of the early Ioptron trackers. Um, what I uh, am hoping to get better at as time goes by is to 
you know, get one step better with each round of pictures that I take. I've, I've been taking pictures since uh, just about the time I was starting in high school. Um, and I started out with a roll camera, 127 film, and did the processing in my basement and did the printing in my basement. And uh, when things got to be electronic, it got a whole lot easier. Uh, the kind of imaging that I like to do is uh, actually going out and doing deep sky imaging because that's what the telescope is best suited for. Uh, I have tried doing some planetary imaging and I've had kind of mixed results. And for that, I've got uh, a little ASI uh, 120MC camera that I pop on the back of the telescope. So far, because I don't use it very often and uh, because I've got so many trees around here that I can't see the ecliptic, uh, I'm not doing a lot with that. Uh, my goal is to uh, uh, find out uh, how I can improve the equipment that I've got. I'm not looking for buying new equipment. I'm not looking for uh, uh, a bigger telescope. I'm looking for sharpening my skills. And sharpening my skills is going to include things like uh, finally getting around to balancing the telescope which I haven't done yet. Uh, adjusting the backlash on the telescope, which I haven't done yet. Everything up to this point has been uh, just out of the box, set it up and take pictures. Thank you, Eric. Who would like to go next? Hi, Bob Wade. <laughs> Dwayne, go ahead. I can go. Hi, I'm Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne Weller from uh, Grand Rapids, and uh, my equipment is, um, uh, my telescope is a StellarView SB102, and um, I use a, a Canon 70D um, as my imaging unit. Uh, I've got a ZW guider. Um, I just put on an, uh, an Optic electronic focuser, which is really cool, um, and the whole thing rides on an AVX mount um, and I drive the whole thing from either a laptop or a Raspberry Pi and I, I set my up set up my own Raspberry Pi to to uh, to work with that and it, that's actually kind of cool um, let's see for goals um, I just want to be able to get better at using my own gear um, and uh, I just want to learn from y'all about uh, this whole uh, astro, astrophotography, so. All right, thank you. Who's next? Andrew? Hi, all. Uh, my name's Andrew Loveless. I'm very new to astro. I've been in the club here probably eight years. Um, I work a lot. I don't make a lot of meetings, but I just want to learn more. I know nothing right now. So I'm going to lean on all of you guys and girls. All right. So you got nowhere to go but up. Exactly. <laughs> Who's next? I think Angel Jacobson went through. Angel? I okay. Saw, I saw she's. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm really new to this kind of sort of. I was part of KAS uh, probably about five or six years ago now, or maybe longer. Um, but I am, um, I sold all my gear and I just purchased some new stuff. Um, so I'm learning again. I've got a Zenith Star 61 and the Sky Guider, Sky Guider Pro. And of course, um, the um, next Star 5SC that I ordered is on back order for over a month now. So hopefully that'll come in soon. But um, I just use a, a, I've got a Canon T3i and a bunch of lenses that I use. Um, fortunately, I live out near Grand Junction, so it's kind of remote other than my neighbors who think they have to light up the night sky. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I just want to learn as much as I can. Um, I really enjoy the creativity of um, astrophotography. And, and so I'm, I'm hoping to 
absorb as much as I can um, so that I can pass that on to my grandkids. All right, thank you. Who's next? Josh, I'll go next. Josh, <laughs> Josh? Uh, I don't see it. Uh, you're not on my screen, Josh, but go ahead. All right, everybody hear me okay? There you yep. are. All right, I drug the scope over to help with visual. <laughs> this thing's heavy, so this isn't going to last very long. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Explorer 127. Uh, it's a triplet. Uh, guide scope on top. Counterweights that I've machined to throw off the triple lens and the guide scope. Custom computer designed in through here. It's wireless that I will screen share in through so I can just run it in the backyard and try to stay comfortable in the house. Um, I run all Z ZWO equipment, um, guide scope. I don't recall which one I have on here at the moment. Um, I run monochrome for the guide scope. I get much better results. I have found running the monochrome guide scopes than with the color. The color bounces a lot, we'll just say. <laughs> and then I am running a 0.7 focal reducer which gets me down to, I believe, 540 is my focal length on it. Gets me at a F six and a half, I believe. It's been a while since I've looked at the charts. Um, and then currently I am running a color on here, but I also have a monochrome camera. I have a whole slew of filters that I run through. I primarily do long exposure on a CGEM2 mount. Um, I try to keep my exposures in the three and a half minute time range. I do live here in Portage uh, and I have found that even with the light pollution filters, with the light pollution that's in the sky, if I go any longer than that, then I start dealing heavily with the noise in the area. Um, and really, I just hope to share everything with everybody um, and get better at my post-processing. I, uh, I've bounced through a few different programs. I enjoy going in and out of all of them, but I mean, there's always somebody better than me and there's always somebody that knows something that I don't. So if, uh, if I can learn one thing from everybody out here, that would be amazing. All right, thank you, Josh. Dale, I see your virtual hand up. Would you like to go? <laughs> Sir, uh, having some issues with my internet connection, but yeah, my name is Dale Agheiser. I uh, live in Plainwell, Michigan. I've been a member of the group for a few years. Uh, I do not have a telescope. I do what observing I do with binoculars at this time. Uh, I am into cameras. I have a number of Canon digital and Fuji digital cameras, supporting lenses and supporting equipment. Um, what I'd like to get out of all this is one, probably number one, to learn from all of you, uh, because I'm a, certainly an amateur at this aspect of, of the uh, hobby. And uh, I'd like to get more out of the digital uh, equipment that I have and, and be able to take or do astrophotography. So that and, and to learn how to process imaging, uh, the image processing. So um, I'm looking forward to uh, working with all of you that have that experience. Yeah. Thanks. All right, thank you, Dale. Anybody like to go next? There's David Wolf, son, waving. Oh, Dave Wolf, go ahead. Yep. Are you there, Dave? Where are you? I don't even see you. This audio's not going. We still can't hear you, Dave. Okay, he's waving off. Um, who would like to try next? All right, I'll go. Uh, so I think you all know me again, uh, but if not, this is your first time here. My name is Richard Bell. I am, of course, the current president of the Kalamazoo Astronomical Society and uh, just one of a handful of lifetime members. 
Uh, that honor was bestowed upon me just a few years ago, and I really appreciate that. So um, I have a lot of equipment now. Of course, my, my mount, my main mount uh, now is Astrophysics Mach 1, which I absolutely love. I've always loved to say uh, using that mount, I have never lost an image. I've never lost a subframe ever with that mount. That's how good it is, and so I love it. Uh, like Eric, I have a Celestron nine and a quarter inch uh, Edge HD. I did purchase the focal reducer for it, even though it took them seven years to come out with the damn thing. Um, and I have barely been able to use that so far. And besides from the uh, SCT, I have a, a Stellar View 130 millimeter refractor. I have a Astrotech eight inch Newtonian uh, that's been modified a little bit has much better collimation knobs than the stock model. My, I also have a Astrotech 65 millimeter quad refractor, which they don't make anymore. And I do have a Lunt uh, 60 millimeter H alpha scope, but I have not really used that for imaging very much yet. The camera I usually use is just a old, uh, mo it's, it's a modified Canon T3i camera. I think it's the 600D now. I, I lost track of that now, but um, of course, I don't really use my own stuff that much these days because, as many of you guessed, because I did a great deal of the work on it, I mainly use the remote telescope. Uh, so I, I use that a lot. And I've, and when the remote telescope is offline or someone else is using the remote telescope or I just want to go out under the real sky, I'll head out to Owl Observatory and use the new Leonard James Ashby telescope out there. You know, we have a great 16-inch uh, telescope with a 4-inch teleview with a uh, ZWO ASI uh, 071 color camera. And so, you know, aside from learning to use my own stuff, you know, I, again, I want to learn to use the remote telescope better or make it work better. There's still a few areas to tweak about that. I want to continue to improve, of course, my, not just my image gathering skills, but my processing skills. And of course, I love all forms of astrophotography, which is probably a problem because you know, maybe I'd get really good at one thing if I focus on it, but I like to do it all. I like to take images through the, the various telescopes. I like to do, uh, you know, telephoto stuff. And I, you know, really like wide field images of the sky, especially the Milky Way. And the one, the, the one extra thing I want to learn to do that I haven't really done of yet is do time-lapse photography. Because, you know, we've all seen the gorgeous images of galaxies and clusters and nebulae. But the one thing that always takes my breath away is time-lapse images of the Milky Way rising and arching across the sky. To me, it's just, you know, the most fundamental, incredible thing you can do as an astrophotographer. So, you know, of course, we can all learn from books or YouTube videos. But I, you know, want to learn from every one of you because, uh, you know, everyone knows something. No one knows everything. And of course, uh, another thing I want out of the SIG, uh, aside from people, you know, just sharing stuff is for us to, you know, get out together under the sky and image together. We can either do it at, you know, like Richland Township Park or Owl Observatory. Uh, we, we can do, maybe we can take the, uh, the group trip up the Dave Gardens property, which we were supposed to do last year, but the world ended. So that's the one thing I'm really looking forward to more than even learning is just getting together with everyone and doing imaging together. Uh, so that's what, what I'm really looking forward to. Who would like to go next? I don't see any hands, so. If anyone hasn't gone yet and wants to, just go ahead and speak now. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm assuming we got through everyone that wanted to share something. If you want to share something later, you're more than welcome to. So let's move on with the agenda here. So the next thing that we'll do uh, routinely at meetings is we'll uh, do astrophotography news. So, of course, the first thing that includes is sharing your latest images. So um, I can... Uh, set it so people can share their screen. And if anyone has any current images they'd like to share, go ahead. I see Pete's hand. So Pete, you go first. Okay. So hot off the presses last new moon, we had the whole week of like clear skies. So amazingly, um, I took advantage of it. So over five nights, oh, wrong screen here. Hold on. <laughs> Not right. that. You don't want to see that screen. It's all boring right. stuff. I saw the agenda. That's good. Hey, yeah. Uh, here we go. This one, yeah, screen two. 
So I spent my five clear nights going after M109. Mm -hmm. You can see I, I process and fix insight if you haven't guessed. So um, getting a little better at it. So it's LRGB, uh, 18 hours total I spent. Typically I'll spend like 50, uh, 10, I do 10 minute frames. I'm south of Kalamazoo and Schoolcraft, Vicksburg area, kind of out in the middle of the farm field. So I can definitely, uh, my SQM readings are like 20.4 usually. Sometimes it depends on what the night is like. Um, I've discovered that PixInsight has the really cool annotation feature. So you can go in there and have it really annotate your field of view so you can find all the really uh, cool um, galaxies that are in there. So there's like 15 different galaxies in here too. But so yeah, I was pretty pleased with it. Um, it's really nice, especially when you get the oh, that one star and the Big Dipper is just off the field of view that always shoots the, you always get the reflections. This is an eight inch uh, RC telescope. Um, first image of my new um, Astrophysics 1100 mount. Um, the guiding was unbelievably crazily good. Um, my PhD was pretty much a flat line, more or less. Um, and I do off-axis guider with a, an Orion thin off-axis guider. I use a Lodestar black and white camera, just nice, pretty solid, pretty easy to use. Um, uh, astronomic uh, LRG filter set, nothing too crazy. But um, I'll pretty much all, like I said, uh, 10 minute exposures, so. That's all I got with this. All right, pretty awesome, Pete, as usual. Thanks. Anybody else have any new images to share? Josh? All right. Oh, let's see. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out which desktop here it wants me to share. <laughs> Yeah, that's my problem. <laughs> well, here we'll do it this way. I'm going to make it my background. Okay. And I'll, I'll slide out of the way. Choose video filter, side effects. But anyways, what I've been working on is the moon. I'm trying to get a full color image of the moon. Um, hmm. I've gotten, well, you've seen my nebula work and you've seen some of my galaxy stuff. But, oh, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> oh, delete. And then there we go. There we go. <clears throat> I'll see if I can maybe see if I can highlight you and make that bigger. There we go. All right. Um, so so far this is roughly four hours worth of exposure time. And wow. it's been very hard trying to get an exact layover between all the different phases and not have a full moon. And that's what I'm going for here. Mm. I want a half moon, but in color. I've always seen them full moon, but I've never seen them half moon or quarter moon. So that's what I'm going for here. And well, you can kind of see I'm starting to pick up colors through here. Yeah. I'm starting to pick them up. And through the seas but that's where my processing is starting to bite me in the butt because I, I start pulling exposure out to get good color then my whites are starting to blow out yeah and wow. so that's been my big fight I have a hard time dealing with uh, not blowing out star colors. The moon is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I use PixInsight as well, so I, I fully understand the battle. <clears throat> That's a challenge. I never thought of that one. All right. Yeah, um, doing, doing color filters only allows me to go so far. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do uh, another member first. Uh, he couldn't be here tonight. So I got an email today from uh, KAS member Mike Melwicki. 
Unfortunately, he had to work during the SIG meeting, so this is what he sent me. As you can see, it's uh, M81, M82 from May 13th. He used his uh, big William Optics 132 millimeter refractor. I've seen that at some of the public observing sessions. And as you can read here, he used a ZWO uh, ASI 2600 on a Celestron CGX mount with 19 300 second subframes. I can click on the image, make it a little bigger there so you can see it. So looks pretty good. Very nice. So you can, of course, take a closer look at that. He, uh, you know, of course, he sent it to me, so I posted it on Twitter, as you can see there. But uh, hopefully you saw this in the newsletter. If not, you need to read the newsletter more often. So this is one of the project I, I worked, I gathered over the summer or the, uh, the uh, winter. Of course, this is the Great Nebula in Orion along with the Running Man Nebula. This is taken with the uh, Takahashi telescope on the remote telescope using the uh, SBIG STX16803 CCD camera and the Astrodon uh, Luminance red, green, blue filters. And it's a whole, whole, whole variety of images. So basically this is um, uh, 28, 30 second shots, 15, five minute shots, uh, 16, 10 minute shots, and then 15, 10 minute shots each with the red, green, blue filters. So that uh, equals exactly about or uh, um, 11.65 hours. So this, wow. is the, this is the longest I've gone so far. And of course, if you attended the uh, Pix Insight tutorial that Pete did a few weeks back, uh, most of the, the, uh, you know, the stacking, alignment, and processing was done by him. This is a, a little tweaked version of what he sent me. But then I decided to put it into Lightroom and tweak it a little bit more. So no one's seen this version yet, I think, except for Pete. So I was curious to see what people thought. So, you know, I, I do like this view because it looks more, more like H alpha, you know, like you see in like a hydrogen alpha telescope. So it looks pretty natural. But I wondered, you know, could I make it look a little more pinkish as we're kind of used to in some pictures? So I did uh, that. So there's kind of a more pinkish version and maybe technically this is more natural and this is a more pinky so any thoughts of which one you like best the the original yeah natural original, or original. The so this is a great this is a great intro to one of the most important aspects of processing yeah. and that's making sure that everyone has a calibrated monitor right mm -hmm. because I personally, you know, I have my work laptop, I have my iPhone, my iPad, I've got a gaming monitor and an IPS monitor, and every image looks extremely different on every one of them. Yeah. So, yeah. It, yeah, I, I personally use an i1 calibrator. They um, you can get them for like 100, 150 bucks. Um, but yeah, it's a good tool if you get really serious into processing. Um, that probably would be a good, I think someone actually even mentioned that maybe having it as a topic for, for this, for this group is to yeah. see what's out there, especially if you want to go print them, that makes it even more crazier. So I, I've been starting to try to print some of my prints and yeah, they have been all over the place. Yeah. Yep. Did, uh, did that Orion image have any H alpha data in it? No, there's no H alpha in that. Mm. Nice. Strictly. Yeah. Anybody else have any new images they want to share? Sure. Okay, Eric, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to hit the share button. And I'm going to hit the Windows Media Player. It's going to pick up in the middle here, probably. And share. You see anything? Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. I thought that uh, Richard said something about uh, moving Milky Ways being really <laughs> top notch. This is from uh, Sini Wildlife Reserve up in Newport Peninsula. Fun, uh... I'll let it cycle through one more time after this. This is a uh, shot with uh, uh, Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter lens. And this one is probably off of the Nikon camera. 
How much total time is it, Eric? Uh, I was out there for about uh, two hours. Did you use any dew strap at all on the lens? Um, I had a little hand warmer that I held on with a rubber band. <laughs> Okay. Time to give it back. All right. Thanks, Eric. That was cool. See, those never get old. No. All righty. Anybody else have any images they'd like to share? Uh, yeah, I got a few. Yeah, me too, Richard. Okay. We'll uh, stop Eric sharing there. And hope someone else can share. Yeah. Uh, I'll just share some of mine from the remote telescope. This is uh, just a quick H alpha that I just took from the uh, directory and just quick stack and stretch of uh, M16. Oh, there you go. Very nice. Are these all Thank your you. images or did you hijack some of mine, which is totally fine? Uh, I, no. I think, I think this is all your data. Oh, okay. And then luminance from M17. I think this is yours too. Just another quick stretch and then this is all this is my uh h alpha data from veil but it's not very long so there's still a lot of noise oh wow i think this might have red data in it too those are all with the plane wave obviously yeah. the 16 one is but yeah when you get finished processing those the first thing to do is to uh horizontally flip it because the on axis guider gives a mirror image of, of everything. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Trevor Jones released some uh, free data. So I uh, stretched this. Of... Oh, very nice. Thank you. You took that? No, this is uh, Trevor Jones's data. I have no idea. I just, I just stretched it. it. Who, who's Trevor Jones? Uh, he runs a YouTube channel called Astro Backyard. Oh, okay. Oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. And then I also did one for the Lagoon Nebula. This one's not as good, though. He makes some of his data available for download for processing? Yeah, yeah, I can grab a link. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Richard, could this group uh, have a central data bin for everyone to draw from? What do you mean? Um, a, a place where people can put their calibrated or raws and then other people can, can uh, you know, group tutorial, so to speak, process yeah. it. Yeah, that's, a, that's certainly a possibility, yeah. Of course, if you, if you pay these remote telescope subscription fee, you can download any image ever taken. In fact, we just recently upgraded to two terabytes because we were almost out of the 200 gigabyte space. So there, there are quite a few images on there. So what, you, what is that fee, if, I, if you could let me know? 50 bucks. And of per course, year? it's per year, right. So you, so, so, so you get to use like a $110,000 instrument uh, every year for 50 bucks. Yeah, deal. Right. Course, we'll easily, of course, you know, we, we limit it to people in Southwest Michigan, but you're definitely an easy exception. So that's no problem. Okay. Being, uh, being a longtime KS member. I'll, I'll show you one of my uh, eye telescope ones right now. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, yeah. Which desktop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, go. I'm sorry. I haven't set up Zoom to share the screen. I am on, on, a, on a Mac Pro, so or iMac. Yeah, that, that, that's my same fight as I, I haven't authorized Zoom as my. Okay, let's see. Screen. Yeah, gotta log in. So which 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 button do I pick in order to share the whole screen? Any other Mac guy there? Um, you got to go into settings and I'm you there. Gotta... Hold on. Let me open mine up here. 
system preferences. Security and privacy. Yeah, and then you got to log in, and then on the right hand side there should be uh, Zoom. I got the it. Plus minus window. You should be able to hit the plus button on that, and that should authorize it. Okay. Let's see if this works. If I remember correctly. You just did. Well, go ahead. Let somebody else, and I'll figure this out. Okay. All right. <laughs> Frank, I see your hand. You want to share a picture? Yeah. Give it a okay. shot. Let's see if I can do this. This was the last uh, SpaceX launch, manned launch in mid-April. And what you're seeing there is, as the first stage is going up, uh, right about here is where the sun began illuminating the exhaust and it followed all the way down until we lost it out in the Atlantic somewhere. Wow. The only trouble with this was it was five o'clock in the morning. Nobody's up in Florida at that time. <laughs> What are the gaps in the tail light? Is that some I, uh, You don't have time in one of the launches to change your plan if you don't know what's going to happen. So what happened is if my first plan didn't work and I got no data down here, but then this was manual shooting. As soon as the uh, 15 seconds was up, then I reshot again. 15 seconds. Each one of these is a 15 second photo, ah. as is each one of these. Gotcha. Very cool. Frank, where was that taken from again? Winter Haven, Florida. Oh, nice. We're about 75 miles away from Cape Kennedy. Now, I don't know how to get out of this. Is that your personal Cape, Frank? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, it is. <laughs> I, uh, I get a little bit of money from them each year for that. You should. You should get a nickel for each launch. Well, no, it's it's a little bit of money. <laughs> so that picture was taken 75 miles away? Yes. It's like Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. I live further uh, away from the Cape than uh, than Frank does, and I've seen the launch uh, from from uh, where I live. I, I, I live all, all the way on the other side of uh, Florida on the, the southwest coast, and, and we can see the launches from here. Okay. All right, uh, Robert, do you think you're ready? Yeah, let's try it again. Okay. <laughs> there Is that go. coming up? Yep, okay. we see something. We're good. We there see we your go. screen. Oh, there we go. That's IC 2948 running Chicken Nebula. It's sort of between the Southern Cross and the Ekarina complex. This is a Hubble pallet. Um, this is in Pixid inside, of course. Uh, that's what I use pretty exclusively now. Uh, I, I, I've had several different different tutorials, but the ones that I like the best were Adam Block on uh, his website. But what I like like about it a lot is I caught some of these Bach or factory globules. Yeah. And actually down. Uh, down near the bottom, if I can uh, get to the right spot here. I even caught a, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, well, I'm just gonna highlight it down here with my cursor. There's a nice little planetary right down yeah, here as well. I see it. Okay. So there we go. Oh, very nice. Very cool. Nice. It's a running chicken. Yeah. Uh, one of the nice, I, you know, I don't have to fool with my own equipment and it's pretty well optimized by full-time technicians on those sites. So uh, what you can really do is concentrate on your processing. Mm -hmm. So do you set the criteria for the photo or the specs? Um, 
I, I have them not right in front of me right now. The right. average the average time on these because it's narrow band on this particular telescope, which is T9, uh, I can go up to five minutes or so on, on each exposure. Now the but question I, is, the question is, do you tell them what you want? Oh yes, you can. You can. You set everything up. Uh, which filter you want, how long you want to run the filter, okay. which, which order you want. Um, and then you just have to use, uh, you know, your, whatever your software you want to throw out the bad ones. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks, Robert. Robert, okay. could, you, could you share with us the cost to use a telescope for something like that? Um, sure. Um, it varies, of course. It, it, it does cost more with more aperture. Uh, they do have plenty of uh, large plane waves in there as well. Uh, and it depends also on, there are different tiers that you can buy on a per month basis. So the higher the tier you have, the lower the cost per image. And the bigger the telescope, the more cost per image. And the phase of the moon, uh, will affect the cost per image as well. So it really varies, uh, which is one reason I'm uh, migrating a lot towards um, narrow band is because the, the demand on the different telescopes drops pretty dramatically around full moon. Thank you. So as long as you pick the right part of the sky, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, to, to answer your question, you can get decent images, honestly, or anywhere from 50 bucks to 500 bucks. Per image? Per image. <laughs> so if you, if you think about how much you put into the plane wave as a club, well, an individual would have to sink a lot of money in it to, uh, to, you know, to come up with something like this. And so um, I'm paying more than, than uh, a, a small telescope, but I have access to a whole lot of different ones in a whole lot of different locations. Yeah. All right, thanks, Robert. Okay, grab the screen. Yep, I got it. All right, who'd like to go? Any, anybody else have any images that they took to share? I guess. Dave, did you? I got one. Oh, go ahead, Dave. Then Paul, you'll go next. Okay. Uh, click on, oh, going to share here, share, sound, share, no, I got it there now, okay, let's see if I can find it here, I got a picture, it's my first galaxy actually that I worked on, I got to finish uh, processing it. I'm in the middle of it. So uh, get centered here a little bit. I can probably zoom in a little bit, but I got to start denoising it here a little bit. And when I do it, I uh, lose all my detail in the galaxy and I got to get the right mass so I don't lose the detail in the galaxy when I get all the background noise gone. This is my first galaxy I've actually shot and tried to process. Which galaxy is that? So that's a work in progress right there. Which galaxy is that, David? Say again? Which galaxy is that? Is it the Needle Galaxy? Uh, NGC, uh, NGC 4244. So it's a nice little galaxy it's for my wife. One of the one I could find that I could zoom in enough to get some detail on. So and I might as well show my other one that you was drooling on the last time I showed you. The swan and the eagle. That's oh, just yeah. a black and white one. That's actually taken with narrow band. It's all narrow band imaging. It's actually, I made a mistake. I was supposed to 
make the colors separate and I processed them all together and I ended up getting that. And I was pretty happy with it. So that Very was nice my day. two latest pictures. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Okay. Uh, All right, uh, yeah. Paul. Hey, there we go. So I just, I'm just starting to get my first shots out of that eight inch I was mentioning earlier. And uh, this is the equivalency of you take all the leftovers in your fridge and dump them into a casserole. These are like all the test shots. The processing is quite bad, but um, excited to see moving up from a four and a half what you can capture with an eight. And uh, I've just got one or two other ones and uh, grabbed Ring Nebula just over the uh, couple weeks ago in here in May and tiny little object. The field of view on that is way too big for this guy, but uh, you can start to see some of the color come out. So that was kind of a fun one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is the one I was kind of more excited about M51 and uh, compared to what I was doing earlier with a, with a smaller uh, scope, I've been pretty pleased with what I've been able to grab with this. And uh, um, yeah, it'll be fun in the coming weeks to see now that I've got the guiding worked out a little bit better and uh, have an electric focuser so I can get that dialed in a bit. And uh, just in my favorite of all time, of course, you know, not a most, not common for imaging, but man, the best visual object I can find. So uh, but yeah, I'd be excited to see what we can do now that the summer's here and hopefully we get a little more clear skies. So, yeah. Yeah. All righty. Uh, does anybody else have any uh, new images they wanted to share, real quick? And we'll move on. I okay, got, let's. I got one, but I think I, think I figured this out. There we go. All right, share screen. I'm going to start here. Can we see this all? Yep. Yeah, great. All oh. right. Um, so this is my horse head here. And I don't, let's see, new shares. I took and combined that data with my Orion data. And I stitched together a little over 1,200 photos. And this is where I ended up. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Very how many, de how many degrees of the sky is that then? <laughs> um, well, you can see here the horse head. That's yeah. one section of my, I, I don't know the degrees. I never worked it out. I just, I know that that is, um, I think it was 51 sections that I stitched together um, in a little over 12, uh, well, here, uh, 1,237 wow. photos. Um, it didn't turn out perfect. Like, if you can see where my cursor is, you know, there's some stitching lines here. There's some stitching lines here. Up here in the corner, there's some stitching lines here as it goes through. So that was, especially this section here, really drove me nuts. As much as I worked to stitch all that together, um, PixInsight kind of fought me as I went through it, but that's what I did all winter. And then when I got done with that, I moved on to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the difference. I, I, I got to the point to where I was, I was happy enough with it. <laughs> I mean, well, I spent enough time. Scope for this? You used your, your uh, refractor for this? Yes, I did. Nice. So, and it, it didn't turn out perfect. I mean, uh. If you, you can see down here, I do have a little bit of ringing that I was dealing with. But I, I, th I think my Explorer Scientific did me pretty good. <laughs> very, very good. All right, thanks. Well, I think we'll end right there. Um, one thing I had on the agenda, uh, just because I just had it ready and I, wa I wanted to see if everyone saw this. Uh, I have, you know, interesting images from other astrophotographers. So I, I'm sure you all saw this on APOD this past Monday. This is with the uh, Canada, France, Hawaii telescope. You know, so this is a large professional grade telescope. This is NGC 4565 and Coma Berenices. And I just thought that was incredible. I've always loved that galaxy. 
So if you want to see that, check out APOD from this past Monday. Is that the edge on spiral galaxy? Yeah, that's an edge on spiral galaxy, yep. Um, next, uh, new astrophotography related equipment and software. So again, this will be a standard thing we'll talk about in, in the, uh, during the SIG meetings. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention, um, if you again read the newsletters, you may have heard this, but um, I, I showed an image from Mike Melwicki earlier. That was with his new camera. His previous camera uh, was a ZWO ASI 294 uh, Pro Color camera, and he donated that to the KAS for member use. So I have it. I have it here. I was going to show it during the meeting, but I forgot to grab it and bring it with me. But you know, it, this looks like a ZWO camera. You know, like a red can. So you know, th they all look the same. So. Um, I just recently ordered a AC adapter for it so you can do the cooling. Of course, it has all the other original uh, cables and adapters and stuff like that. And eventually we'll put that on the uh, telescopes for loan page, which I, I think by this time we need to change it to the equipment for loan page because we have just, you know, we have telescopes and binoculars and now a camera. So really it's more equipment than telescopes. So that'll be available for loan if you want to use the camera with your own equipment. But again, just remember, of course, we have the remote telescope, but that'll be shut down at the end of June. And we have the uh, Owl Observatory telescope uh, waiting for use. So that's my quick uh, equipment related um, release. So hey, anyone Richard, uh, on, yeah. on that, that, uh, that 294 is my main camera. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to bother me. Great. The software control, I think, can be downloaded for free from the ZWO website. I haven't looked for the link yet, but if you, you know, if you don't have a more commercial uh, control program like a uh, Sequence Generator Pro, you can, you know, use some, you know, the, the program you can download for free to control the camera. We do, currently don't have any light pollution filters for it, but, you know, if members keep using it a lot, Maybe we'll get some Optolong uh, light pollution filters, like the L Enhance or the L Extreme filters and the L Pro filters. So we can we can add that to it if, if again a lot of people use it. So it, it just depends on how many people choose to use it. And of course, if no one's using it and I want to use my own equipment, then I guess I'll use it. <laughs> Anybody else want to share any astronomy related equipment or software? that you either bought or something that just came out that's cool or what? Yeah, I got this uh, Sharp Star has been making waves lately. Um, actually, um, at Trevor, um, the Astro Backyard, I think someone mentioned his, uh, the YouTube, he has, uh, the OPT has that, um, that Raptor. This is basically the same thing for a few hundred bucks cheaper, made, by, made in China, they're all the same. It's a triplet. Uh, 61 millimeter. Um, I got the matching um, uh, flattener reducer. It's, uh, drops it down to f4.5. So nice little two inch uh, focuser. Actually, looks pretty good. I'll mount this on top of my uh, eight inch RC, and I doubt I'll have to guide this thing at all. But <laughs> looking forward to uh, some really wide fields finally sticking. You know. It'll be for similar like what uh, Richard was showing with the Takahashi, the you know the entire Orion Nebula. I want to get the entire Pleiades, you know, really big, big stuff. Um, the summer stuff. I if you haven't guessed, I like galaxies, so I need to expand my portfolio with like Nebula and stuff. So I look forward to that. And visual. I'm actually gonna look through it. It'd be I know a shocker. I'm gonna look through stuff. Maybe the sun, moon. Yeah, we don't talk visual here. It's all. No, it's all I'll take pictures. I'll take pictures. I actually have a Nike. I have a Nikon DSLR. I'll hook up that up too. Do some uh, lunar eclipse. Isn't there? I, I you did a interview this week about the lunar eclipse on Wednesday. Yeah, uh, I don't know what. I just you know any any publicity for the club is good publicity. So they talked about the lunar eclipse this Wednesday, and of course the one the the one question she asked me that she didn't share is. Are, are you going to observe it? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't get to see any of the good stuff. So eh, no. Uh, anybody else want to share any equipment that they either bought or just something, something new? 
Yeah, sure. I'll share something. Uh, so in my garage right now, but yeah, I recently got the QHY uh, 268M, the medium color filter wheel, uh, had it for about a month or so. Uh, been really impressed with the cleanness of the data on the end. Um, but yeah, it's been working well uh, so far. I've had to do a lot of uh, tuning on the back spacing. Uh, so every time you in introduce something new, you know, like a one millimeter difference between the focal reducer and the camera might be another eight mils of focus or a pretty big effect. But uh, so far it's been good. But uh, the one issue I had has been humid recently. So I've had to leave the, uh, the desiccant tab uh, or desiccant tube uh, screwed into the side of the camera. Uh, even at like minus five Celsius, it will start getting uh, some fog uh, during the summer. So hmm. one challenge point anyway. All right, thanks. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, just recently we got uh, this little thing here. Um, this is a uh, Optech uh, zero 0.62x telecompressor. This is for the 16-inch uh, meat in the observatory, so we can get a little less focal length because you know the 16 inch is over 4,000 millimeter focal length, so that's kind of long. So uh, we did get a focal reducer for that. Unfortunately, for the 16 inch, or you know, in general, the Mead ACF telescopes, there aren't really any really good focal reducers available like there are for the Celestron, like Edge HD telescope. So if you're trying to choose between imaging for you know a Mead or Celestron ACT definitely get a Celestron for imaging because they have a much that you know they have the dedicated focal reducer for the edge HD telescopes so we just need to get the proper spacings for this for the 16 inch uh, so that's the only thing we need to work on we also ordered a uh, L pro filter for the observatory out there we, we already have an L L enhanced filter, which is for nebulae, but we also got an L Pro filter, which is more for general light pollution use for galaxies and clusters and stuff like that. And of course, that's on back order. And we also ordered a um, infrared uh, pass filter, the Batter Planetarium version. So if anyone wants to do planetary imaging out there, which can include, you know, include the planets at night or the sun during the day, because don't forget, out at the observatory, we have a 90 millimeter Coronado. Uh, H-alpha filter, so you can go out there during the day and image the sun, you know, really high resolution with the camera we have out there. So that's one of the things I want to do as a group is uh, do imaging out there day and night. Any other equipment? All right, uh, let's move on to the main topic I, that I want to talk about tonight. Of course, this is the organizational um, talk of our uh, SIG group here. So I want to first uh, talk about a permanent day and time to meet. Um, of course, the general meetings are uh, almost always on the first Friday. Sometimes they're on the second Friday. But if we do continue to meet on a Friday, I propose we meet on the third Friday of the month. Uh, whether or not that's in, you know, by Zoom or in person or a hybrid thereof, uh, we'll talk about that here shortly. But again, if it is a Friday, I. I propose the, uh, the, the third Friday of every month, just so we don't ever conflict with the general meetings. Anybody, anyone else have any thoughts, like another day of the week that would actually work better, like a, you know, like a Wednesday night or something like that? Everyone pretty happy with Fridays? It's fine. All right, okay, so pretty much any day, but, you know, after 8 p.m. or so. Yeah, uh, that, that's one thing we can talk about next is the, 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 the regular start time. Of course, the general meetings are always uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, sometimes that can be a little tight, but would you guys prefer to meet like maybe, you know, like Jonathan said, like 8 o'clock or on Fridays or maybe more like uh, 7.30, give you a little more time to get home and get dinner and stuff like that or what? Yeah, I know for me, 8 o'clock would be a little better better with like I have kids and stuff getting you know especially summertime and whatnot right <clears throat> but uh friday second though yeah the, the third friday i think is a good idea gives a little space between meetings otherwise my family will think i just live for astronomy which i secretly do but <laughs> <laughs> uh we, we got it recorded now yeah uh, redact it redact it 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. That means we got to do a 7 a.m. meeting on a Wednesday, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we can try eight o'clock, uh, eight p.m. on the third yeah. Friday of every month, and see what happens from there. Um, yeah, we, we could definitely be flexible. I mean, yeah. we could try it, and if it did, try it for the next one, next one or two, or whatever. And we can, if it doesn't work, we can shift to seven thirty or whatever. I know some of us may have a life and go out Friday nights, but you know, not me. So not me. That, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's um, okay. In the summer, it doesn't get dark till eleven anyway. So I'm yeah. Sure. <laughs> so of course you know sometimes the third friday might run into i don't know new moon but we'll just do the best we can for those of us that use a remote telescope either out in your backyard or out in arizona you know it's it's fine we, we i can personally meet while we're imaging with the remote scope that's fine yeah, um so could this be a destiny destination meeting what do you mean well we could have it in different places Right. We have it at Owl Observatory or Richland Park, or mm -hmm. is yeah. that something we can do? Or probably not for the regular meetings, you know, like this. But okay. But yeah, for 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 for, for some of the workshops, we'll do for sure. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about yeah the the regular SIG meetings like this. So uh, we got the third Friday of every month, and we'll try eight o'clock a little bit later, so so people can. Uh, get ready. Uh, next is the frequency of meetings. And so I would pro propose we have the regular meetings again like this between September and May. So of course now it's May, so we wouldn't really meet again until September. September I would propose be the full start of the Astrophoto SIG. We'll, we'll, we probably won't have a regular speaker at every me meeting, but you know when, when we do have like a guest speaker uh, specifically for the SIG, It'll that'll start sometime in September or beyond. So, because I figured we're all, you know, of course, right now it's a gorgeous day. We had a good turnout today, but it's the first meeting, so people often tend to come, you know, for for the first meeting. But once we get going and get in the good weather, people are going to be like, "Oh, it's good weather. I don't, I don't want to go to the SIG meeting. I'm just going to skip it." So, mm -hmm. I figured this will be about as late as we meet, you know, in May. And then we don't have regular meetings at all in June, July, and August. Of course, we'll have like the general meetings and the picnics and stuff like that. We'll probably even do uh, workshops. Again, we can do workshops, you know, at, at the observatory. Um, of course, the remote telescope will be shut down during the summer. But if we, if people don't, you know, um, want to learn how to use their own equipment better, we can also go to Richland Township Park if you don't want to go to the nature center. Because, you know, the, the, the skies are a little more open and a little darker at Richland Township Park. And one thing, if you don't know about Richland, is near the batting cage toward the back, they do have an electrical outlet out there. So we could all plug in to power computers and stuff like that. So, so that's also a possible meeting. But, but again, I, I propose we have the regular meetings between September and May and take the summers off. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. Okay. And of course, the um, would yeah. any. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Pete. Well, I was going to say, would anyone be up for like informals or over, over the summer, where we just throw a meeting out there, and if anyone shows up, we can talk with whatever. Definitely. Yeah, because I mean, I'd be game for that. Okay, I don't know how we would do that, Richard. Whether we just send the invite out and then maybe make me like. Uh, co-captain of the meeting whether you start up the meeting or i i don't know how the, i should know this i'm in it I should, I should know how zoom meetings work but i use teams at work yeah i don't know um but i i i, I, I like the idea of having at least the informal ones where whoever can show up hey we show up and we don't really have much of an agenda yeah just to kind of keep the ball rolling so i can talk i can talk astrophotography all day long right that's a good way to learn too yeah yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I could, if it gets dark enough, I can obviously my observatory. I could throw it up, and we could throw. If someone has questions about PhD, whatever the stuff is, I could, you know, we could go over that stuff. Or, or if it's their equipment, we could, you know, whatever, work out bugs in their stuff. Uh, of course, it doesn't get dark till midnight, but hey, whatever. Get some coffee going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do a. Uh... We'll have to do a, a mailing, a, like a letter campaign to the Michigan House and 
and the governor and keep pushing them to stay on uh, standard time year round. So it yeah. gets darker a little earlier. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I say let's this. I don't know. I, I don't know how as far as like the official, as far as what your the frequency. It sounds like I informal, definitely through the summer, but more more agenda driven from September through May as far as like getting guest speakers. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense for everyone? Everyone cool sure. there? Everyone? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is kind of the big question. Um, I, I know what the answer is going to be for those of you that are out of state, but um, of course, we're just meeting on Zoom right now because we kind of have to. Um, but once we really get back to normal, um, would most of you like to continue meeting on Zoom for the SIG meetings or would you like to meet in person? We, we, of course, if we meet in person, we can, we can try to do it a hybrid way. We can try to live cast it on Zoom or something like that. I, I don't know how we'll pull it off, but we'll figure it out. But we can at least record the meetings and put them on YouTube so you can watch them later. But what's everyone's preference? Would you like to meet in person or would you like to continue on Zoom? Meet in person. Okay. Yeah, I'd like a mix, actually. Um, I'm not that far away from Kalamazoo, so that's not the limitation. It's just more that uh, all my equipment is like on a semi-portable scope buggy thing. And it's like the real stuff takes a lot of time to tear down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I meant for a regular type meeting where we wouldn't be imaging together. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think a mix would be good. Like even in every other month sort of thing would work. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. of course, if we do meet in person, we have to figure out where to go. You don't see Mike Sinclair here, so I don't think he's going to be part of the SIG. He's not really an imager, even though he kind of wants to be. But uh, we can't really go to KMZ. I, I don't want to impose on him. You know, of course, we'll be going back to KMZ for general meetings, and I want to drive him up there for a SIG meetings. So if we did have to meet in person and continue on a Friday, frankly, I don't know where to go. Because um, the observatory. Uh, yeah, we, we might we might be able to do the Nature Center. One time when they thought we were going to do the the uh, the um, remote viewing sessions, they thought we were going to do them out there, and they offered to give us the keys to the place. So that would be totally cool if, if we could get into the Nature Center without having to bug anyone there or having to rely on anyone there. So that that definitely is a possibility. But um, Another possibility would be Porridge District Library, but we would have to meet probably on Wednesday nights because they're open a bit later. And then we would have to start earlier because they probably close at nine, I think on Wednesdays, but they mm. definitely close at regular time, like maybe as late as seven o'clock on Fridays, at least in the summer. I don't know if their hours change, but but it's, it's easier on Zoom because we don't have to organize with anybody because unfortunately we don't have a large observatory with a meeting room to go in right now. That's if, if we ever do do that, it's, you know, it's probably 10, 15 years away. Um, so meeting in person would be more challenging, but meeting on Zoom would be easy. Plus on Zoom, if we do regular software demonstrations, you know, with PixInsight or Deep Sky Stacker or PhD2, et cetera, et cetera, it's easy to do those on Zoom because it's a lot easier to record the screen and then post that on YouTube later so people can watch it and re replay it back over and over again as you learn how to do processing. So I personally like the Zoom, but we can try to do in-person meetings once in a while too, especially when we have uh, KAS members that give a presentation. But again, another advantage with Zoom is we can invite some pretty ambitious speakers. You know, for, for our next general meeting, we have a freaking Nobel Prize winner talking at the meeting. So if we meet on Zoom, we can invite some really ambitious people because I would like for our very first meeting to maybe get Adam Block to give a talk. You know, if it's on Zoom, it'd be easy. Right. He, as long as he doesn't charge us a fortune or anything. Say it's going to be expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would, I guess I, my, my thoughts on that would be to let's see if we can find some place that would be that could fit our group and that would be reasonable access say on a Friday or something like that. See what the options are besides um, Gamzee. Um, I guess I don't know what's out there. I'm just kind of back in the air. I say, hey, if we're up in Grand Rapids, I have a big meeting space at my work. I we could have used that, but I don't think we want to drive an hour no. <laughs> north. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I don't know what's in the area that we could use. If there's any colleges or I don't know, like KVCC, do they have any spaces or? I doubt we could get in. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Rude all. It's a possibility if 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 we can get uh, easy access in. Again, I I don't want to impose on Kirk to let us in because he has no interest in regular imaging, but we would have to see if we could get, you know, like a key to the building. They can automatically unlock uh, Rude Hall for us, but we'd have to get a key to one of the classrooms. And I can check on the Nature Center. I don't know what they're, you know, currently, I mean, things will change obviously soon enough, but right. um, I can check to see, you know, what that would be like for availability wise. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would say like ta table that part as far as like a, a sp not, not for right now, but let's do some investigation and see what we can dig up. Right. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to meet once in a while, especially if there's like demos for like how to, you know, do spacing on, on cameras and, you know, get your spacing right for, you know, reducers and stuff or even collimation or whatever. Clean your mirrors. Hey, who wants to clean my mirrors on my telescope? Any, yep. Anyone? Any hedge? Any, anyone? Nope. Okay. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll table that for now. We'll give it some thought. Um, perhaps for the first meeting, we'll uh, we'll try in person, and we, we'll we'll definitely try to live cast it on Zoom so our out of state people can uh, participate. But mm -hmm. we'll definitely at least record it to put it on YouTube. So mm -hmm. we'll uh, we and again we, we we might even try the hybrid thing. Definitely, I think when we do image processing talks and tutorials we i think that would work a lot better on zoom than it would anywhere else mm -hmm. and when we try to invite the more ambitious type uh speakers so that gets us into the next uh topic is uh again we, we don't have to come up with a massive list today but um of course we're interested in possible topics you might want to talk about we could do stuff on, you know, polar alignment, uh, auto guiding, learn how to use PhD2. I would like to get one of the PhD2, PhD2 uh, main people to, to give a presentation. So that, that, that'd be something. But uh, of course, there's, you know, again, there's image processing, setting up your telescope, balancing your telescope. There, you know, there's all kinds of possible topics that we could do. And of course, there's a whole slew of guest speakers I have in my head that we could invite. So if anyone had any uh, topics or speakers they wanted to share now, but if not, uh, give us some thought and we'll uh, start working on that for next year. And of course, uh, the, the last thing is we can do these year round. It, it doesn't have to be necessarily during the summer, but uh, of course I th think that's when the weather around here is the best, but of course, over the summer, we're, we won't have our formal meetings, maybe just informal meetings, but we can do a variety of workshops because, of course, uh, we're very lucky as a club. We have two fantastic resources to use. We have the remote telescope in Arizona. Um, of course, I've, I've done many live training sessions. I, I, I recorded a training video that you can watch, but if people are still hesitant to use the remote telescope because they're intimidated, again, we can do, you know, live workshops. We can do imaging together um, with, with, with the group, or we can do, you know, if you want to try to learn to use it yourself, but just need a mentor, um, I can mentor you until we get really other people up to speed and using the remote telescope. I know, uh, you know, uh, Mohammed's used it several times. Lloyd has used it a few times. Henry has now using it several times. So there's other people that could uh, uh, mentor you on the remote telescope. So of course, for, you know, for me, that's one of the main reasons of doing this is to encourage more use of the remote telescope. So, so we can do workshops and stuff like that. Uh, of course we have Owl Observatory. We have of course the Leonard James Ashby telescope. We have a, if you don't know, we have an astrophysics 1600 uh, German equatorial mount with a 16 inch mead and a four inch uh, NP-101 Teleview. We have the ZWO uh, ASI 071 camera. We'll, we'll again, we'll pretty soon have a, a slew of different filters to use. And uh, we use, um, we, we have a dedicated computer out there with uh, uh, Sequence Generator Pro and the Sky X and so on and so forth. So we have a really good facility to use out there in person. And, and I hope to get more people using the observatory so we can purchase more equipment. 
Uh, uh, that's did, uh, more astrophotography related. Yeah, Arya. Uh, for uh, folks like us, ma ma the, those who are less skilled or less experienced, uh, even explaining what is this small gadget, what, what you talked about several things, uh, the, the person, function of that one. It's like an introduction to this piece, uh, this equipment, this equipment. Right. That, might, that will be very helpful. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. That'll definitely be a starter. So um, I will definitely try to schedule some uh, uh, workshops out at the observatory this summer. And uh, if you just want to still use your own equipment, and I, that's totally fine. No, I have my own equipment I would like to use, but I'm, I'm still surprised more people haven't used the remote telescope because, again, I'll, I'll be frank. The remote telescope is better than anything any of you have. So um, you can use basically a world-class instrument, you know, that we did a huge fundraiser on for the, you know, for eight years. And, again, I want to get more people to use that. It is the best thing that we have in the area, bar none. So I, so I want to get more people using that. And we got a pretty good setup at the observatory, too. If you want to be out under the real sky, we have that. Um, you don't have to worry about rolling the roof off anymore. Thanks to Dave Garden, you just push a button, roof rolls off, you're ready to go. So, so, so we have both uh, the remote telescope and our observatory. And of course, we want to help people with their own equipment. We can do that at our observatory, Richland Township Park, so, uh, so on and so forth. And of course, we can, um, again, meet in person. Um, again, a, a classroom environment would be a good place, but we can do hands-on processing classes. People can bring their laptops. We can show people how to process their own images on their own computer and uh, so on and so forth. And so, um, again, there's a whole whole bunch of stuff we can do as, you know, a special interest group like this. Yeah. Thanks. So, so, so that's kind of the, uh, the main topic for tonight. So, again, just kind of a summary. We're going to meet on the third Friday of every month between September and May at 8 o'clock p.m. We'll talk, we'll again uh, work on a place to meet in person over the summer. And we'll try to always get those meetings at least on YouTube so people out of state can watch them later. And um, we'll again try to do our very first uh, workshops o over the summer. Anybody else have anything to add or share? All right, so uh, just a quick reminder. We do have a member only observing session tomorrow. It does look like it's gonna be clear. Um, once all the regular observing people uh, do fly away or, you know, do, uh, you know, leave, um, it, if the moon is still up, you know, feel free to bring out your camera, you know, your DSLR camera. We can do some shots of the moon or we can even hook up the uh, ZWO camera we have out there and do some, uh, you know, imaging of the moon. So, you know, you're certainly welcome to stay out after all the observing festivities have ended. So we could definitely do that. And don't forget for our next general meeting, we have Dr. John C. Mather, who is the senior project scientist of the James Webb Space Telescope, and also a 2006 Nobel Prize winner in physics, and he'll be our guest speaker at the June meeting. And so, like I mentioned in the email, attendance is, you know, it's not really mandatory, but uh, I would be totally hurt if you didn't come to that. We should absolutely have a full house for that one. So I hope to see you all there. And uh, thanks for joining us for the first ever SIG meeting.